Big Bay has been characterized as a prime example of a Carolina Bay formed by wind and water mechanisms over thousands of years based on dates obtained by optically stimulated luminescence. This presentation examines the premise that Big Bay formed in just a few minutes by the catastrophic bombardment of ice boulders ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on a glacier. Today we're going to study Big Bay, which is the official name given by the U.S. Geological Survey to this Carolina Bay. Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacier ice boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. A publication by Brooks, Taylor, and Ivester in 2010 proposes that the Carolina Bays formed during the Pleistocene epoch as shallow lakes that were shaped by the wind, and that the histories of Carolina Bays show a series of responses to changing climates. The paper describes optically stimulated luminescence, or OSL, as a dating technique that has greatly improved the interpretation of sparse, discontinuous terrestrial records of late Pleistocene conditions, and describes the characteristics of OSL as follows. OSL dating estimates the time since last exposure to sunlight for quartz, sand, and similar materials. Its range is 150,000 years before the present, well beyond the range of radiocarbon dating, and it is particularly applicable to dating Aeolian deposits of the coastal plain. In South Carolina, OSL dates primarily in the range of 130 to 30,000 years before the present have been obtained from Carolina Bay sand rims and river dunes. A date as recent as 2,000 years before the present was obtained from the innermost sand rim of Big Bay on the middle coastal plain. At individual bays where concentric rims occur, dating has established that rims are progressively younger toward the center of the bay, reflecting a regressive sequence and confirming that the bays are not single event features. Rather, bays evolved as a result of processes active episodically over a long period of time. Based on 45 OSL dates, active shorelines and associated Aeolian deposition occurred during marine isotope stage MIS-2 to late MIS-3, 12 to 50,000 years before the present, MIS-4 to very late MIS-5, 60 to 80,000 years before the present, and late MIS-6, 120 to 140,000 years before the present. These age ranges also correspond with the ages of other Aeolian landforms in the coastal plain, including sand sheets and dune fields, and suggest a climatic threshold was crossed during the transition towards stagials, initiating both bay and dune activity. The caption of the image of Big Bay says that to the south of the bay, concentric sand rims representing paleo shorelines are progressively younger toward the bay interior. The date of 20.5 thousand years ago is from sands associated with the smaller bay to the south. The Aeolian sand sheet is sourced from the Watery River about 10 kilometers to the west and was moving west to east across Big Bay approximately 74,000 years ago. The surface of the sand sheet was subsequently reworked 33,000 to 29,000 years ago. In order for Big Bay to be covered by a sand sheet approximately 74,000 years ago, the bay must have existed long before that time. Well-preserved Carolina bays have been shown to be elliptical in the mathematical sense. This implies that the bays originated as inclined conical cavities. The analysis will examine the dynamics that created the landscape in this LiDAR image. From the geological law of superposition, we can see that Big Bay was emplaced first. A sand sheet then covered the west rim of Big Bay. Finally, a small bay formed on top of the sand sheet. The paper by Brooks characterized the sandy deposits as an Aeolian sand sheet blown from the Watery River. In this analysis, we will consider that the sand sheet was actually carried as a slurry after one or more glacier ice impacts on the Watery River. The idea that the sand sheet was created by a splash from the Watery River is justified by comparing the west side of Big Bay, which has no Carolina Bays, and the east side, which has numerous small bays even though some of them are badly eroded. A splash from the Watery River could have dredged the soil and obliterated any bays that had been emplaced on the west side. The soil was then deposited as a sand sheet on the rim of Big Bay. Using Google Earth to measure the distance, we find that Big Bay in South Carolina is 1,156 kilometers from Saginaw Bay, which is the convergence point of the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Rainwater Basins. 
Assuming that the launch angle is the same as the impact angle, the ballistic equations indicate that the glacier ice boulder that made Big Bay was launched at a speed of 3.408 km per second. It had a flight time of 7.24 minutes and reached a height of 232 km above the surface of the Earth. The small bay is 5 km closer to Saginaw Bay. From its width to length ratio, we calculate that it impacted at 48.5 degrees, and assuming that the impact angle is the same as the launch angle, its launch speed was 3.373 km per second. It had a flight time of 8.58 minutes and reached a height of 325 km above the surface of the Earth. Both of these trajectories were suborbital space flights in the vacuum of space. The small projectile arrived 1.34 minutes or 80 seconds after the projectile that made Big Bay. Big Bay has a width of 3,115 meters and a length of 4,986 meters. That is almost 5 kilometers. The width to length ratio corresponds to an impact angle of 38.7 degrees. The impact velocity was 3.40 kilometers per second. The time of flight was 7.24 minutes and the trajectory height was 232 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made Big Bay is estimated to be 997 meters. The impact energy was equivalent to 660 megatons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 9.36. The small bay is only small by comparison. Its length is 585 meters, which is over half a kilometer. It was made by an ice projectile with a diameter of 117 meters, with an impact energy of 1.04 megatons of TNT that created seismic vibrations of magnitude 7.49. The projectile that made the small bay was bigger than a football field. It is important to note that the small projectile arrived 1.34 minutes or 80 seconds after the projectile that made Big Bay, because the sand sheet had to cover Big Bay during this 80 second time interval. The Carolina Bays are the most prevalent geological structures of the Atlantic coastal plain, and they cover 100% of the surface that has not been eroded by rivers or creeks. Even though there are no remnants of bays in the watery river, we begin by assuming that one or more impacts on the river splash some mud and water onto the river bank. The high energy of the impact and its seismic vibrations liquefy the ground and carry the watery slurry toward the location of Big Bay. Big Bay was created when the impact of an ice boulder with a diameter of 997 meters struck the ground at an angle of 38.7 degrees while the slurry of water and sand was approaching the location of Big Bay. Almost immediately after the formation of Big Bay, the sand slurry lost its forward momentum as it covered the western rim of the bay. A small ice projectile with a trajectory of 327 kilometers above the surface of the Earth impacted the sand sheet shortly after its formation. The time between the formation of Big Bay and the Small Bay was 80 seconds. In order to understand the sequence of events, we need to determine how long it took to deposit the sand sheet. The distance from the watery river to the rim of Big Bay is 7 kilometers. The best analogy to the movement of the sand sheet is a lahar, which is a rapidly moving slurry of pyroclastic material, rocket debris and water. The material flows down from the side of a volcano, typically along a river valley. In steep areas, lahars can exceed speeds of 200 km per hour or 120 miles per hour, but as they move further away from the volcano and decelerate in lowland areas, they eventually begin to deposit some of the load and decrease in size. If we assume that the speed of the sand sheet was 200 km per hour, like El Har, then the speed corresponds to 55.6 meters per second, and the time required to traverse 7 km is 126 seconds. In summary, the time between the formation of Big Bay and the Small Bay is 80 seconds. The time to deposit the sand sheet after the impacts on the river is 126 seconds. From these times, we can see that the emplacement of Big Bay has to take place at least 46 seconds after the impacts on the river, otherwise the small bay will be covered by the sand sheet. Also, Big Bay cannot be emplaced more than 126 seconds after the impacts on the river, because then it will not be covered by the sand sheet. The result is a carefully choreographed ballistic deposition lasting approximately 146 seconds to 176 seconds. This is an interval of 2 minutes and 26 seconds to 2 minutes and 56 seconds. 
This analysis has demonstrated that Big Bay, the sand deposit that covered it, and the small bay that landed on top of the sand sheet could have been emplaced in less than three minutes. The impacts on the river occurred at least 46 seconds before Big Bay formed. This means that the sand sheet was already flowing like a lahar toward the location of Big Bay just before the impact of a glacier ice boulder with a diameter of almost one kilometer created Big Bay. The geometry of the Carolina Bays and their distance from their point of origin provide clues that can only be deciphered using mathematics and physics. This type of analysis will eventually reveal many details about the extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet that ejected glacier ice boulders and whose secondary impacts made the Carolina Bays 12,900 years ago. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. I will continue to examine the Carolina Bays one bay at a time. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays.